There you go. <laughs> So how's everybody doing today? Right? Uh, well, as he said, my name is Bill. I'm going to be your chauffeur and narrator for the first part of the tour. And uh, boy, oh boy, I hope you guys are ready. <laughs> this is going to be the best tour you guys had today. <laughs> Some folks got that. Now I'm actually from Flint, unlike Michael Moore. I don't have movies and I don't have a lot of money. I'm working on the money part, really, seriously. This is my favorite part of the tour because I get to find out where you guys are from. So, spit it out. Where are you guys from? Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia. Huntington. Huntington. Where? Indiana. Where else? Yaler. Yaler. Right on. What's that? I have to, I have to ask the question. In Atlanta, is the gas really five bucks? No, that's a downer. Okay, thank you. All right, folks, check this out. We've got three stores here downtown that are open all year round. Let me tell you about it. We've got the hardware store. We also have Alfred's here on your left. And on the corner, we have Dowd's Mercantile. Now, Dowd's is kind of like a mini market. So later on, I'm going to explain to you how they do their big time shopping in the winter. All righty? So if you guys are ready for this great tour to begin, say, oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> I like that. <laughs> All right, here we go. Everybody look to your right. Can you see the statue on your right in the park? That is of Father Marquette. Father Marquette was a French missionary who came to the island in the late 1600s. His job was to witness to the Indians and do missions work. And he did that out of a birch chapel that looks something like the one up front and to the right. Can everybody see that? Get up there, boys. Come on. Now, up on the hill, we have Fort Mackinac. Fort Mackinac was brought over here by the British during the Revolutionary War. So, folks, I'm not going to spoil it for you because guess what? You're going to hear a lot about that later on in the tour. So if you guys are cool with that, say, okay. Okay. I like you guys. <laughs> Okay, look to your right, folks. It is the American Fur Company retail store. This is now the William Beaumont Memorial. Let me explain, let me tell you a story about what happened. There's a gentleman by the name of Alexis St. Martin, who was a Canadian fur trader. In 1822, he was shopping. By accident, somebody's gun went off and shot him in the stomach. Dr. Beaumont, being the close position of the fort, went ahead and decided to take him out. He helped him heal his wounds completely, but Unfortunately, folks, oddly enough, there was a quarter-sized hole left in his stomach. Dr. Bo uh, Dr. Beaumont went ahead and decided to take advantage of it, and he started doing studies. He would take silk string, tie food to it, drop it down the hole, and study how the digestive system works. This, basically, was what Dr. Beaumont discovered. He discovered gastric juices and enzymes from this study. Still to, this, still to this day, the medical world, believe it or not, contributes to findings and discoveries that happen here on the island. Now, there's two things named after Dr. Beaumont. In Detroit, Michigan, there is a hospital, Beaumont Hospital. And in the great state of Texas, there is a city called... Beaumont, Beaumont. Texas. You got it. Now, has anybody ever heard of the word fistula? Getting out. It's used in livestock, and that is the practice, folks. Look over here to your right, it's the post office. Now, it's not your common post office like what we know, because as we go through town, you're going to find out something. None of the houses have addresses. That means they come and get their mail every single day. And that makes for a great time when there's nine feet of snow in the wintertime, and cabin fever is just about to make you go crazy. <laughs> it's the Stewart House Museum to the right. This was the original headquarters of the John Jacob Astor Fur Trading Company. And it is said that John Jacob Astor was a self-made millionaire from the fur business right here on the island. To your right is the community hall. This was one of the warehouses. There was about 300 employees that actually divided, split, and packaged the furs and got them ready for sale. We've got our courthouse and police department on your right for you frisky people. <laughs> you guys want to hear about our vehicles, our motorized vehicles on the island? Sure. Sure. We have one police car, one ambulance, four fire trucks. Okay. Pretty cool, huh? 
to the right is the most important house on the island to date. You want to know why? Why? That's where I live. <laughs> now we do have UPS on the island, as you can see to your right. But no, they do not drive their brown trucks. But we do give them brown horses instead. Yeah. To your right is the Benjamin Blacksmith Shop. Now, can everybody see this wrought iron fencing here? Yes. That was sure. made from the blacksmiths during a demonstration. Now, usually that door is open, and you're usually doing iron work. If you see that door open later on today, check it out. It's a lot of fun. Really neat to see if you haven't seen it. It's the Biddle House to your right, probably the oldest house on the island, dating back to about 1780. The proprietors were Mary and Ed Biddle. Now you're going to hear about their daughter Anne later on in the tour, so remember that name, Anne Biddle. Now we got about two dozen bed and breakfasts on the island. The one on the right is the Metevier. This is just an example of the high caliber of service you guys get when you stay at these places. Is this not beautiful? Yes, it is. Love it. We also have our Mackinac Island Medical Center to the right. As you can see on the smaller sign, you have to schedule your emergencies between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. So. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, they have state-of-the-art facilities. If a woman was to go into labor, we can help her with childbirth, overdose of fudge, no problem. <laughs> Stitches, that's our specialty. Anything really extreme or major, we go ahead and we put you on a plane and we fly you over to the nearest hospital, which is in Petoskey, Michigan. Now, to your left, can everybody see the green and white buildings? Uh-huh. That's the Twilight and the Windsor. They house about 500 of uh, the Grand Hotel's employees, almost doubling the year-round residency. Now, the reason I point these out is because that's the original location of St. Anne's Catholic Cemetery. You're going to hear about how it was moved and see where it was moved later on. Pretty wild. To your left, it's a town crier, folks. It's our newspaper. Now, this newspaper, unlike the papers that we know on the mainland, doesn't talk about unemployment being at an all-time high or doesn't talk about inflated gas prices being up to, what is it now? 350? 3.39. 3.39 a gallon? No, they talk about recycling. They talk about what the kids are doing in school. They also talk about community events. This is a very simple community. The paper will show you that. It comes out once a week. It's only 75 cents, which legally makes it the cheapest souvenir on the island. <laughs> Now, can everybody see the cottage up here, the yellow cottage on the left? Yeah. That is where Mayor Dowd lives. She's been the mayor for 30 consecutive years. Last three, last three one-year terms, guess what? She ran on a post. They really <laughs> like her here. To your right it is Chamber Stable and Livery. Now, this one here is really cool. This used to be the headquarters for carriage tours, but we got about 300 horses now. So now we use this for our shuttles and for our specialty buggies. And if you guys look, you can see some of them right there. And yes, they are convertibles. So you can ride through town on that honeymoon or anniversary, or maybe that special occasion. And while you're riding through town, everybody's going, ooh. Ah. Matter of fact, let's give that a try, folks. Ready? Ooh. Ah. You guys are going to do just fine. Now you're on Kadok Avenue, better known as Lilac Lane, folks. We've got about 67 different types of lilacs on the island, brought from the French. And the highest concentration is right here on the island, or on this street. Now look over here to your left. That one dates 150 years. And believe it or not, it still blooms every spring. Next to it is the Grand Cottage. It is the former house of William Backhouse Astor. Now do you guys remember me telling you about John Jacob Astor, the fur guy? Come on, boys, get up there. Come on, get up there. Now, little known fact, John Jacob Astor never set foot on the island. Two reasons why. Number one, he was afraid of the water. Number two, he was afraid of the Indians. So he did the next best thing. He sent his son. Now, William was here for about nine years. During that time, he grossed about $3 million. Get up there, boys. In the fur industry. Now, that's pretty amazing when you think about it because those furs were only going for about 50 cents to $5 a pelt. That's a lot of money, folks. After that, they tried their hand at the fisheries business, and guess what? The industry just was not nice to them. There's a lot of folks who doing the same thing. 
So we put our focus and energy on the one thing we do the best since 1900. That's fudge. That's why you guys are here. Everybody say, I'm a fudgy. I'm a fudgy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> What's happening, y'all? Now we have 15 different fudge shops here on the island, owned by six different families. My personal favorite is Ribas because it's not so sweet and the texture is really smooth. But that's just me. Every single one of them has different things to offer, so give them all a try. Get up there, boy. Now, to your right, this is really sharp. This is the Little Stone Church, folks. All the rocks were quarried right here on the island. And can everybody see the stained glass windows? Those were sent to France and painted so you could see them better. Now, they got plexiglass on them to protect them from the elements. Like uh, rain, uh, sleet, hail, snow, wind. But there's another element. You guys want to know what it is? Some genius put a golf course next to the church. No joke. <laughs> Look over to your left. Beyond the trees, it is the Mackinac Bridge. Five miles in length, it is the longest expansion bridge over fresh waters. Isn't that cool? Yeah. If you guys look to your left and down a little bit, you guys see the red brick building there? Mm -hmm. Now that red brick building, that is our school. It houses about 100 students a year, grades K through 12, and believe it or not, we on average have a graduating class of two to 10. Last year, we had four. We had no kindergartners. <laughs> to your left, or to your right, I gotta tell you. Chicago Lawyer buys this house, builds it, construction costs 15000 bucks. He can't keep it, the state of Michigan picks it up, makes it the governor's summer cottage. There it is on the bluff. Isn't that beautiful? Now you're gonna see a better view of it here in a second. There's 25 rooms, 8 bathrooms, 11 bedrooms. Our current governor is Jennifer Granholm. And when Jennifer comes over here, she flies in on her Learjet. Just because she's the, the governor doesn't mean she can drive. Nope. She's got to walk, bike, or take a horse and buggy just like you guys. Now, don't you feel special? <laughs> I do. <laughs> now, here's a little known fact about that house, folks. Right now, the appreciated value is $3.2 million. But if the state of Michigan ever decides to sell it, they cannot sell it for the appreciated value. They have to sell it at construction cost of 15000 bucks. Wow. Do I have any takers? Yeah. <laughs> right on. That's what I like to do. Get there, boy. All right. Who's ready to hear about the Grand Hotel? All right. I'm going to tell you about it. 1979 was the year. There's Jane Seymour and Christopher Reeve. The movie was... Anybody? Somewhere in time. Somewhere in time. That's right. Now, I gotta tell you, I don't know if you guys know this, but did you know that Christopher Reeves was allergic to horses? I read that in a semi-autobiography. Mind blown. Now, the porch that you're looking at is 660 feet in length. It is the world's longest covered porch. For 10 bucks, they let you go in and do a bunch of cool stuff. You get to check out a maritime museum. Also get to check out an art gallery, and there's a bunch of specialty shops. But I gotta tell you about what really curled my toes. This was awesome. From 12 o'clock to 2, every single day, they have an all-you-can-eat buffet. Now somebody asked me what's so special about that. What's special about that? I'm glad you asked, sir. <laughs> it's a 50-foot buffet. And 20 feet of it is nothing but desserts. That's where I come in. <laughs> now, the cost of the buffet is only 45 bucks. <laughs> but if you go ahead and you check out the museum and gallery and you pay 10 bucks, it's only $35. So it's a pretty fair trade. They actually cook for three other restaurants here on the island. One being the Jockey Club right behind us with the red and white umbrellas. Number two, the golf course's clubhouse, which is called The Woods. And number three, the tea room, which is up at the floor. Now, it is time, ladies, for the Martha Stewart Minute. Check this out, ladies. Look to your left. Can you see the balconies? Can you see the color of the balcony ceilings? That is called grand blue or sky blue. The reason they painted it that color is, believe it or not, they were having huge problems with insects and birds nesting. Since they've painted it that color, 
the birds just fly right through there because, believe it or not, they think it's the sky. <laughs> now, I had a lady on my buggy last week. She said she was here last year. She heard the same thing. She immediately went home, painted the roof of her gazebo in her backyard sky blue. She said she's never had a problem since. So it works. So if you're having, that, if you're having problems with birds and insects, you know what to do. Go sky blue. <laughs> now, the Grand Hotel is the only five-star hotel that does not offer valet parking. <laughs> For obvious reasons. Now, I can't quote any prices, folks, but I can tell you this. The Grand Hotel charges per person, not per room, because along with your room, you get breakfast and you get a five-course meal. Pretty cool, huh? Now, can everybody see this cottage here to your left? That is part of the Grand Hotel. It's called the Mascot Cottage. Now, they do charge in hold for that. It's used for specialty, uh, special occasions like uh, anniversaries, honeymoons, VIPs. And uh, I'll tell you what, they really pamper you. You guys want to know what you get with the cottage? You get your very own concierge, your own bus, and you get your very own taxi. Now, of course, the Grand Hotel knows that being taxied around and being waited on hand and foot, and having someone cook for you all day, that can be pretty exhausting. As a matter of fact, it'll tucker one right out. So guess what? You also get your very own personal masseuse. <laughs> and all this can be yours for the total price of $15,000 a week. Do I have any takers? No. <laughs> Now, while my engine is cooling down, I want to share something with you guys. This isn't part of the tour, but I share this with the people on my buggy because I know there's a lot of people that come here looking for things to do, maximizing their time, and uh, I'm sure you guys are like that, and the last thing you want to do is bust the wallet. Can you guys feel me on that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I like it. Check this out. Look to your left. Can you guys see the garage door that's open? That goes to the Grand Hotel stables. Now we have draft horses to pull the buses. You probably saw them, the maroon ones that say Grand Hotel on them. But they also have high-stepping hackneys. Who's ever seen these horses? They're very beautiful. If you're wondering what they are, uh, who saw the wedding of Charles and Di? There you go, that's the horses. Now, they actually have some really special buggies for them to carry. And if you look where that guy's dumping the hay as soon as he gets out the way, Look at that buggy. Look at the craftsmanship. That's white leather. These are made from car companies like Oldsmobile, Brewster, Studebaker, and Pontiac. They got about five or seven of them. The reason I tell you guys about this is because, believe it or not, any day before 5 o'clock, if that gate is open, you guys can go in there for free. It's the only stable that will let you go in there on the island. So, you guys should go in there and check it out and have some fun. That's my little secret to you guys. Step it up there, boys. Come on. Now, do we have any golfers on this carriage? Okay, well, I'll make this really super brief then. If you look to your right, you'll see the front nine of the Grand Hotel Golf Course, the Jewel. Look up in the distance, you'll see there is a golf cart. They give it to you so you can brag and say, hey, I drove on the island and nobody did anything. <laughs> now, the only thing is, if you guys do decide to go golfing, don't get a wild hare and bring it out on the main road because $500 fine. Very steep. Now, the golf course has a back nine in the woods to take up a mile and then about a mile and a quarter to the left. And it's again, let me turn down my radio, folks. There we go. Got a little static going here. Um, <laughs> They, they actually have a clubhouse at the back nine. <laughs> and uh, when you're done golfing, you can actually hang out at the clubhouse, have dinner. I like telling folks about this though. They actually have a one lane bowling alley. And uh, if you choose to go bowling during lunch or dinner, make sure to choose your partner wisely because guess what? You're going to need a manual pin set. Oh yeah. And if you make your partner mad, the game won't last as long. <laughs> Come on, get up there, boys. Now, you guys want to know a little secret about the Grand Hotel employees? Sure. Right. Okay, some Grand Hotel employees do not receive tips, but carriage tour drivers can. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> That's my joke. I'm working at it. It's a work in progress, folks. Okay, I'm going to slow things down just for a second because i got to show you guys something. Read that sign right there nice and long. Caution, caution, stay tail. Bicycle slow. Caution, bicycle slow. The reason that's there is, believe it or not, we have a speed limit of 25 miles per hour on the island. Go ahead, you can laugh. Everybody does. Because on any given day, you see folks come flying down this hill at about 45 miles per hour. Well, little do they know there's a guy hiding behind a tree with a badge and a radar gun. <laughs> He's clacking them. He pulls them over, says, I need your autograph. Just, just for being such a good sport and playing, here's a piece of paper worth 150 bucks. And possible points taken off your driving record. Amazing, isn't it? And for the adults, guess what? They have their very own version of a DUI. It's called a DUI. <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Step it up there, boys. Now, hey, Nora, everybody say hi, Nora. Hi, hi Nora. Nora. <laughs> You're looking fine today. She gets, <laughs> she gets so embarrassed so easily. That's why I do it to her. Whoa, boys, whoa, whoa. Now, can everybody see these red and yellow buggies? That's our taxi here on the right. And uh, we have the world's only horse-drawn carriage radio dispatch taxi service. It's in operation 24 hours a day, all year round, even in the winter time. So if you guys ever need a taxi, feel free to give them a call. Can you see the green and white ones behind those? That's our 747s. They seat about 35 people, and you guys are going to be on one on your second part of your tour. Now, who knows about Jayco, the RV and camper company? Anybody ever hear of them? They actually made those buggies for us. They made 17 of them. We've got 16 in operation here. Step it up, boys. And the 17th one is actually on display in Indiana at their headquarters. Now, we are in front of the Mackinac Island Carriage Tours headquarters. That's where these two boys live and where I work. They've got a really easy day. These are Percherons. They weigh about 15 to 1,800 pounds. And uh, let me tell you what they do. Real easy. 7.30, I go in, I comb them, I bathe them really good, collar them, harness them. They wait for about 30 minutes for me to get ready and have my coffee or whatever. We hitch them up. They only work for six hours. That's it. They come back in, collars and harnesses go off, and uh, they're bathed and they get some fly spray, and they hang out in the corral the rest of the day. Now, at the sixth hour, because of the fact we go from nine to five, check this out. These boys here are switched out at about maybe 12 or 1 o'clock. This is my second team. I usually have two teams a day. This is my second one. We also have Belgians that stay in this barn. They weigh about 18 to 2300 pounds each. And they're going to be pulling the 747 in a team of three. So you guys will see that soon. Now who knows what a farrier is? Step it up boys. Come on. Step it up. Come on. A farrier is a guy who shoes the horses. I'm going to pass this around because I'm going to show you the type of shoes we actually have. There you go. Can everybody see that door with this, the, that anvil on the back behind it? That's where our three barriers work. The one thing you'll notice about this horseshoe is number one, it's got a steel inlay. Number two, it's coated with polyurethane. Reason being, less shock resistant for the horses and the concrete's not so hard on their hooves and, and legs. It's kind of like a Nike tennis shoe for horses. They like it. Now we have about 500 horses during the tourist season. In the winter time, we scale them back to about 20 for drays and taxi services. The rest of the horses, they go to our horse farm up in Pittsburgh, Michigan, where they do absolutely nothing. Must be nice. Now, I gotta tell you guys, with these horses, even the ones that stay here in the wintertime, they got it made in the shade. Because they only plow two roads. Major mode of transportation is snowmobiling. 11 years old and up can operate snowmobiles. So parents, guess what? No snow days for the kitties. <laughs> now we got about 500 residents that live on the island year round. Two thirds of them live up the street here. Into a place called Harrisonville or the village. Reason being is, number one, you guys were downtown. You see how noisy it is downtown? You wouldn't want to live there, would you? No. Number two, believe it or not, the wind of the elements actually do really damaging things to those buildings. I just recently found out they have to repaint those buildings every single year. Pretty wild. 
And number three, from what I understand, they don't like the smell of fudge. <laughs> now, I don't know if they're talking about the fudge down there or the fudge these guys make. I'm not going there, folks. Now, remember I was going to tell you guys how they do the grocery shopping? <laughs> Check this out. We have an, air, an airport behind the village. Now, what they do is during the wintertime when they want to do their shopping, they call over to the mainland or even send an email over there. Here goes my radio. <laughs> now, when they, when they send their email over, what will happen is the stores will pull their packages, box them up, put them on the ferries if the lake isn't frozen over. If it is, they put them on an airplane, send them over, someone will pick it up or it will be dropped off right at their house. Must be nice if you ask me. Now when the lake does freeze over, which is sometime in January, it forms what's called an ice bridge. Safe enough for a sleigh or a snowmobile to go on. But what they do is the residents will take their Christmas trees. See how all these trees are lined up there? They take their Christmas trees from the year before and they form a tree line to the mainland. So say Susie's on her way back from St. Ignace, she gets in the middle of the lake, she finds out the visibility is really low. All she's got to do is follow the tree line to safety. Isn't that neat? Yeah. Now I'm about to send you guys up here to Surrey Hill. Can everybody see the double doors? Yeah. Inside there, there's carriages that are just awesome, antique carriages. There's even a horse-drawn purse. It's on display. There's pizza, fudge, ice cream, hot dogs. Also some really cool souvenir shops. To your right, there's a yellow building. That's the Butterfly Conservatory. They show you a butterfly from the very beginning stages of the chrysalis all the way to them landing on you. The cost of the Butterfly Conservatory is only five bucks. Now spend as much time as you want up here. When you're ready to take the second part of your tour, you just go through this building. On the other side, you're going to see a 747 waiting for you guys. They leave every 15 minutes, so take your time, okay? Now I got three rules before I park this buggy. Number one, all you got to do is wait till the buggy comes to a complete stop. Number two, exit on your right. Number three, and this is the best part, have a great day. I got to tell you guys that, I mean. <laughs> and last but not least, folks, I got to tell you, if you enjoyed my tour, get up there, boys. My name is Bill. If you didn't enjoy my tour, my name is Jason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all righty, folks, you guys are all set. Have a great day. Good afternoon, everyone. You want to...